With spring coming to an end, the garden is absolutely filled with flowers. You might remember this bed that I built about six weeks ago. It is looking fantastic. But with the heat of summer coming, there's plenty to do. Like every good relationship, your garden needs time and affection. Oh, I love you, darling. So let's take a closer look at mine, then. My garden, of course, not my marriage. That's all absolutely fine. I hope. The front part of my garden is filled with lots of lovely shade-tolerant plants, which give you textural interest through their foliage, things like this Ligularia and Hosta. The problem with plants like this, though, is they're just snail food, and they will strip them clean in no time at all. So I'm going to use a snail pellet. Now, I'm using one that is iron-based because it's fine around household pets like cats and dogs, and you want to be applying this every time it rains. Almost every garden I know has a citrus tree in it, and at the moment, I can guarantee they're covered in pests and diseases. Mine is no exception. I've got some leaf miner, some aphids. I can even see some psyllid in there. So I'm going to attack them all with a natural-based spray. Now, at the moment, they're covered in these lovely soft green leaves, and that's what the insects are looking for, so you want to focus on those. Citrus really don't like root competition, so I've removed all of the weeds from underneath, and now I'm giving it a really good dose of an organic fertiliser. You really can't overfeed citrus. Rust is a fungal problem you can get in your gardens that comes when you've got really moist and warm conditions. And these nasturtiums are just covered in it. Now, I've got plenty of nasturtiums. I don't need these ones. So rather than trying to treat them, I'm just going to rip them all out, which is going to give me more space for some planting. It's really important when you're removing any fungal problems from a garden bed not to put this in the compost, because it will just spread when you put the compost back in the garden. So, it's best to go in the bin and get it out of the garden. In the foreground of this garden bed, I'm planting these petunias. Now, this one is called a crazy tunia. You can tell, because have a look at the flowers. It almost looks like a galaxy. Now, these are an annual, so they're only going to last one year, but they're going to flower all the way through summer and give you lots and lots of a fantastic color. way to ensure your springtime flowers go all the way through to summer is to deadhead them. I'm going to deadhead all my Coreopsis through here. What that basically does is take the old flower head off, so you break the life cycle and it won't go to seed and it pushes more flowers through. It doesn't work with all flowers. I'm not going to do it with my snapdragons, but things like daisies and, like I said, this Coreopsis respond really well to deadheading. It's a great job to do with secateurs. I'm just using a little knife, and it's a great way to get kids out in the garden as well. They get in, they look for the old flowers and see how many they can collect. The more time I spend in my garden, the bigger it seems to get. And this area out the back is growing as well. Now, I've just planted some fruit trees, but until they get up and give me a canopy, I've got all this real estate underneath that I'm going to be planting into. Before you plant anything, and especially now before it heats up, you need to improve your soil. I've put lots of compost into here, and I've also applied a wetting agent. Now, your soil doesn't have to be hydrophobic to apply a wetting agent. It's just good practice to do it. It means the rainwater...
eight weeks. But because these have gone straight into the ground, I'm giving them a boost right now. You can liquid fertilize every seven to 10 days for maximum results, because liquid runs through the soil quickly, but it's also absorbed really fast as well. Mulching your garden bed is one of the most important things you can do to set it up ready for summer. But not all mulch is the same. For garden beds like this, where I've got ornamental plants, and I'm going to be mixing more plants into it, I'm using a sugar cane. This is going to break down really quickly to help feed the plants, and I'm not concerned if that gets mixed through the soil as well. For my veggie patch, I've gone for something even finer. This is a loosened mulch. That's going to break down really quickly, but because veggies need so much nutrition, that's great for them. For things like my hedges and trees, I'm just using a coarser pine bark mulch because it breaks down slower, but it still helps to retain the moisture. And that is my spring garden all ready for summer. It's your turn to get outside, show your garden some love, and it will look good all summer long. Hey.